It's Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. Another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast is underway. I'm your host, yours truly, the intern. My name is Alex. And this episode will be uh, somewhat of a continuation of the last uh, topic we were on, which was niche studying, niche, niche studying, where students ideally could change the education system, the whole system, the whole institution of academia. <clears throat> students could turn it on its head. Students could work to improve it without, um, without the need to go to school, really, if you think about it. <clears throat> and I have thought about it. I've thought about it extensively. And what changes could be done, what adjustments could be made. If you're unfamiliar with the format of this podcast, um, just know that this podcast is uh, it's a cathartic means to vent to uh, discuss, converse, to argue with myself. <laughs> so being able to vocalize and verbalize uh, these issues allows me to evaluate my arguments and my logic uh, and the accompanying tact for soundness because I have to know if, if it's right or wrong. Best way to do that is to Put it out there. Put it out there. Put it out there in the universe. So the fact that I'm talking about it, the fact that it's not just in my mind any longer, but I'm able to speak on it means that it's out there. It's in the universe. And if you hear it and it goes into your ear, it might well come out the other, right? And you, you won't give a fuck. But again, I'm not doing this just for you. I'm doing this for me as well. Having volunteered to kick off this podcast, I'm more than happy to uh, take you down some paths. Not just, not just dealing with corporate, though everything has its application. Everything has a corporate application. Just a little background on what my uh, experience is in education and what it was before, not, not before corporate, somewhat after corporate really, but uh, as far as education goes, what can be done to fix it? What can be done to mitigate uh, the damage that public schooling has, in, public schooling inflicts on students? In present day. So if you have uh, kids going to school, if you're going to school, if you're in, in community college, if you're in college, if you're in high school even, if you have, if you know, if you have friends still in high school, friends already in college, anybody who's in the system, anyone who's <laughs> institutionalized, quite literally, anyone who has the status of a student Go ahead and slide them this podcast because this will probably come in handy. Niche studying. Why is it important? Well, while you're at school, you, you are under the control of, of the administration, essentially. You're under, you're under the control under the authority of the administration they can instruct you they can educate you they can discipline you to an extent all of that all that shit to an extent as a student though you want to keep in mind or you want to hold close your personal interests don't let the school beat them out of you don't let the school tell you that your interests aren't worthwhile. Why? Because the school will happily, most happily rip your interest out 
and replace it, replace them with their own agenda. In niche studying, it starts early. Interest in, in students start early. Some students are really interested in art. And uh, you see, I think that might be the most, um, yeah, I think that might be the most obvious because a lot of it is visual, a lot of it is auditory, a lot of it is, is, uh, is kinesthetic. So it's done through labor. It's and, and and it's put and like it's expression like stop saying like and its expression is displayed. It's put on displayed. So when someone is an artist and uh, they take on niche start niche studying, niche studying. I was about to say niche learning, but niche studying. It's the same thing, really. You're just focusing on this one topic, on this one area, this one subject of study. And it could be art. That's where the term, I believe, self-taught comes from. Self-taught artist, self-learned, self-educated, self-taught artist. And there's a lot of folks who are self-taught, not just in art, in math, in engineering, coding, law, medicine, <laughs> there's some folks who there's folks who aren't licensed to practice in very prestigious professions and yet have the knowledge, have the know-how of have more knowledge, have more know-how than folks who've been certified, who've gone through the residency, licensed to practice, all that good jazz. So in niche studying, you see, if the education system was designed for students, schools would have a counselor's office. And again, this is very analogous, analogous to corporate and human resources. The counseling department, the human resources department would have a mission would have a mission to interview their students, to interview their employees. See how I'm creating that analogy side by side. They'd, they'd be on a mission to interview their students, their employees, and find what their interests are. Yeah, it means getting personal. Business is always fucking personal. You think business is war? I can't, I mean, <laughs> I can get past, but I can't, I don't understand folks who say, oh, it's nothing personal, it's just business. Like, like it excuses whatever behavior, whatever poor behavior. So even in education, you can't say it's not personal because a student I mean, younger, younger people, younger students might not be able to differentiate what is personal and what isn't. They are personally going to school. To them, the shit is always personal. They are personally having to sit in class and be instructed. They are personally being indoctrinated. They are personally going through the process. If you haven't gone through the process or you aren't actively going through it, or if you graduate and believe you're no longer part of the process, then you likely don't know what it means to take it personally. But yeah, as a student, you should take it personally. Your education is personal. But you don't want it to replace your personality, your personal interest. You want to take what they... You want to take what they show you, take what they teach you, and apply it to your personal interest. Take it and apply it. You take it, you use it. Don't, don't do what I did. I took my personal interest to school and I got in trouble for it. How about you take the tools out of school? And they don't have much to, to begin with. They don't have many tools. All the research that goes into what's the what's the fucking term 
education, like there's a there's a there's a field of study for just like education, for being an educator. There's like a degree for it, for being like an effective teacher, for being a, a capable, a capable, um, yeah, like a capable classroom manager. <laughs> And even at work, really what you're going there for is the experience within corporate. That's what you're going for is just the experience. When I went to school, I got in trouble a lot because I went out of my way. I mean, I finished my work quickly because to me, I mean, <laughs> it was personal. <laughs> it wasn't a competition, but the shit was personal. So I finished my work and I'd pop up out of my desk and I'd get in trouble talking with the other students and distracting them from their work. Why? Because I was there for the experience. I was incorporating associates since a young cat. <laughs> but, I mean, that comes at a cost, obviously. I can't tell you how many quote-unquote best friends I went through because I was young. I was still young, and it was always personal to me. And I did my utmost to... In retrospect, I did my utmost to incorporate associates, but young Alex, you know, couldn't contemplate associates then. Might have, still might have had the dream to grow up and be a professional, an aspiring professional and wear a business suit. But I was still working in terms of friends and best friends and enemies, playground bullies. I was still in that realm, right? But even since then, I mean, I had my interest. I had math and science. I thought those were really fun because, again, I'd finish my work. Shit was personal. And then I'd go and distract others. And, yeah, I did get in trouble a bunch because I wouldn't stay in my seat. To me, it was personal. I wasn't going to be told what to do. I was only going to be shown. I would only see what you were doing, learn it, and bounce. I wasn't, I wasn't there to be bored. <laughs> I wasn't fucking there to waste time. And for a lot of individuals, achievement in school translates to accomplishment. A pat on the head, a gold star, an A+, plus, that to them is accomplishment. So if the teacher pats you on the head for sitting still at your desk, gives you a gold star, gives you an A+, plus for the most well-behaved, I'm saying it wrong, the most well-behaved, to them, they're winning at life. And there are plenty of students who went down that track, they got A+, pluses. they were you know, the, the nerds, the eggheads, I'm not going to say they were the ones getting bullied, but just those that equated achievement, educational achievement, school achievement with accomplishment, overall life accomplishment. And I'm not discounting, I'm not discounting the efforts because they saw a game that they took personal and they played it, but not me. I wasn't obviously trailblazing. I wasn't blazing my own path. But again, I was the uh, class clown. I was the one you can talk to. I was the one you could talk to about anything, but likely the one you did not want to be. Many visits to the principal's office, many citations, detentions, suspensions, expulsion even. <clears throat> But at the end of the day, I never lost my personal interest. My personal interest was incorporating associates. So I could bring that back to the organization, its namesake. Now I know what incorporating associates is. I understand what I was doing. I was going, I was going through the motions at school when really what I wanted was a gang, I guess, a squad, a clan, a tribe, an organization. That's all I wanted. 
I wanted an organization that I could that I could come to and just talk. We could niche study together on topics of science, chemistry. And I did that with a couple of, and I've done that with a couple of individuals over the course of my professional career. We'd be at work at, I don't know, a retail job at a gym. I, I've put some hours in at a gym before. And one of the personal trainers would come over and uh, we'd chop it up about, I think I talked about this before, about uh, physics physics and nuclear technology at a gym and we had both gone to I mean we'd both been to uh, college we'd both gone to college had some classes under our belt but in our off hours we would go home and we would research nuclear shit just to come back to work and talk about it the next day niche studying it seems far out, the concept. It seems inconceivable in general education how a student could hold on to an idea of a nuclear reactor when they're in the middle of a social studies class, when they're in the middle of an art class, when they're in the middle of an English class, classes that they could give a shit about. But niche studying... Niche studying to me was supposed to be a pass, a ticket through college, a pass through general education. That's what it was supposed to be. Looking back, if I had, if I had conceptualized and, and really crystallized niche studying before I went to college, I would have never gone to college. Fuck college. Fuck the university. Fuck higher education. I mean, the way it is now, fuck it. The way it is today, Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021, fuck school. <laughs> fuck all that noise. And yeah, sorry um, for the cursing. Any parents on the podcast, any students on the podcast, PG-13, son daughter come on at 13 you've likely heard all the words by now especially today in 2021 especially today if you have a phone you've heard it most all of it most even at shit even at 9 and 10 i remember when i was younger i was leading a double life already <laughs> I was leading a double life already. There's this shit you do on the playground. There's this things you say at school that you don't say at home and vice versa. Kids lead a double life. Parents don't know. All parents know is what they did when they were kids and they led a double life. But again, when they leave childhood and become parents, when they graduate and leave the institution of childhood, they forget it. They forget what the fuck the deal is. And to kids, it's always personal. To students, it's always personal. To parents, it's always personal. Within silos. All those feelings, all those personalities, they're all siloed. There's no fucking communication going on. There's no respect. There's no mutual respect. That's why a kid will always be a kid. A child will always be immature. Children aren't necessarily respected. They're directed. When there's parents dumber than their kids. <laughs> there are parents out there more ignorant than their children. There's parents out there who don't deserve to have any. There's schools out there who deserve to burn. Because they don't, they don't bring any honor to the student body. The student body is more capable than the administration is. The administration doesn't know how to how to fucking work computers. They aren't tech savvy. All old blood, crusty ass fucking dinosaurs. And I'm saying this, I'm already like middle-aged. I'll I'll 
cop. I'll cop to it. I'm fucking middle aged. I'm on my way out. I'm on my way out. I'm on the back. I'm on the back nine out here. Fucking. All I got going for me is. Is a bang. It was going out with a bang. And it'll be fun. The closer we get to it, the more I'll talk. Rest assured. But now I'm just trying to get a little audience ship, a little listenership. So I'm keeping it uh, PG-18. Parental guidance and 18 and over, right? So yeah, if you have kids and you feel like letting them listen in on what it feels like to be in between. I got no kids. I'm just leaving my 20s. So I, I, I know what it feels like. I'm on the cusp. I'm on the cusp of, of what is it? Youth and age. I'm on the cusp. I got the mentality, I got the energy. But my body's already breaking down. Fucking, I wake up with pains already. Can't, can't medicate like I used to. Can't pop pills and take drugs like I used to. Nope, not at all. She'll fuck you up. Can't be reckless. Can't indulge. It's a, it's a sense of uh, discipline. Self-taught, self-taught discipline. Where when I was younger and my parents told me no, I was like, what? I'm not here to be bored. I took that shit personal. <laughs> and yeah, they were right in some sense. In some instances, they absolutely had had reason. They absolutely had had it right. They were correct in their judgments. And in others, they were not. Absolutely not. But that's a paradigm I think that's bound to change. And it is. It absolutely is. Children today know what to do with their phones more than parents do. I'm, a, I'm already in that category. My family, older than myself, you know, they're just... They're still tripping over over phones, over the capabilities of phones. And uh, the younger generation, myself, we're fucking light years ahead. But I already, I just said, I'm leaving my 20s. I'm about to be 30. There's already kids younger than I am. There's already youngsters younger than I am who know how to code these things. Fucking born with them in their hands. Forget being born with a silver spoon. Kids being born with iPads already. Like their moms just squat out and squat and pop them out over an iPad. And they arrive just knowing how to swipe and click and edit. It's wild. It's wild. But, I mean, I'm not bewildered. It doesn't surprise me. Because I still, like I said, I still have that energy. I still have that mentality. I don't have dependence, <clears throat> so my attention isn't divided. I feel bad for for <clears throat> kids of like those really great minds. I don't know. They're escaping me off the top of my head. I know like, what's his face? Tesla and I don't know if Einstein had kids, but like really great minds like uh, fucking even Darwin. Like the old, old dude Darwin. Like, must have been a great mind, a scientist and all that. But look how fucked up his family became because he couldn't devote the time to them. I'm not disparaging them, the, the amount of time that they did give their kids. But there's plenty of kids in that category. And they exist all over. So, what's left is niche studying. It's, it really is a coping mechanism. It's a coping mechanism for life. When you aren't being taught, when you aren't being shown what you want to know, you have to niche study. You have to pursue it on your own. (laughs) 
I'm trying to like uh, these are all just premises to to introduce niche studying. I, ha- I haven't even gotten to the fucking core of it. <laughs> This might be like a fucking three or a four parter. Damn. But just know that's what this podcast is for. It's to vent. It's to vent. And I feel, I mean, I feel for my younger self. I feel for the younger generation. They're lost. They're not lost. Let me take that back. Let me retract that. They're distracted. They're distracted. Their attention is divided before they even know themselves. Social media, celebrities, internet stars, pornography, drugs, alcohol, clout even. Clout's a drug. You don't believe me? What is what is validation? Why seek it? Why does it fucking matter? <laughs> when you grow up in corporate... When you have that corporate mindset, validation means dick. You don't, I don't fucking want validation. I'll smoke two or three cats before I give a fuck. Before, I'm, before I feel validated. <laughs> I'll smoke my validators. I don't give a shit. <laughs> ah. Validation, validators are like, they're like gatekeepers. They're like gatekeepers to life pretty much. When you have to, when you feel like you have to jump through hoops to get, to gain approval, I mean, they're just gatekeepers and it's up to you to even, to even mind them, to even pay attention to them, to even acknowledge them. I don't acknowledge my gatekeepers, my validators, son, when you're working with skeleton keys, when you're honing skeleton keys, when you're sharpening skeleton keys, it's like gates don't even exist. There are no doors. There are no windows. Glass houses? Are you serious right now? You think I'm throwing rocks out here? Fucking slinging lead. The fuck is a rock? Just out here leveling planes, leveling dimensions, leveling dreams, shattering realities. what you want to do as a corporate cowboy on some cor- on some corporate cowboy shit that's what you want to do that's the niche that that's the level of niche study that i jumped into now in school what i would have liked to have happen you know this is just me reflecting on my high school career because i mean in high school i was somewhat of an okay student i was still fucking up hardcore i even got expelled but I was an okay student. I was still a decent student. I was, you know, not committed, but doing my homework, passing the tests, finishing my work early and getting in trouble, talking, associating with uh, my with my cohort, incorporating associates, if you will. What I would have liked to have happen was have a counselor pull me aside have a counselor pull all students aside. I feel like all students should go through it. I don't remember this at any point, but exploring, um, but having a counselor help me explore my interests and then refer me to resources. If I had been interested in nuclear fission, then a counselor could refer me to additional sites Possibly put me in touch with some professors at the community college level, if not the higher education level, the the four-year level. Some professors or some scholars, some adjunct professors who aren't actively working, who aren't actively working. And there are plenty of those folks who graduate with PhDs. This is in every field. When you when you graduate with a degree, with a license, with a certification. You're already jumping into a field that's saturated with people like you. If you don't know how to move, if you don't know how to hustle, you don't know how to sell yourself. And I don't mean sell out. If you don't know how to sell that degree in your hand, you're just going to be a schmuck with a degree in their hand. 
<laughs> you're you're gonna think you might believe you're owed a uh, a gorgeous salary, but if you don't know how to hustle, if you don't know how to sell that degree, you aren't getting compensated just for having it. That's what a lot of um, a lot of students fail to grasp while they're in school. The school. Absolutely. They'll hype you up. They'll be like, oh, this degree will make you valuable. We'll make you, uh, what, what is it? We'll make you um, attractive. They'll make, it'll make you an attractive candidate in, in the job market. Ooh, nice. A fucking liberal arts degree, a, a BA, a BS, a master's, a PhD. And you can be in school for fucking 12 years of your life. Jump out with a PhD and not know what to fucking do next. Sitting on a mountain of debt. And you don't know, don't know where to go from here. Yep. You just think offers are going to land in your lap. And for some, very limited number, very limited few, offers too happen to land in their lap. Maybe they were top of their class. Maybe they, they were active. Maybe they, they sought out the opportunities. And for those, I feel like they were not, not all of them, because some of them do, again, jump through the hoops. That is achievement and equate it to life accomplishments. So for them, I mean, they took that game personal, but many students who might be in the middle of the pack, not even at the very top, who might be in the, in the middle of the pack, still get offers because they were active in their pursuit, in their personal study, in their niche study. I'm just bringing it all back. I'm tying it back. I'm bringing it back to center, making a full circle. If you're enjoying this so far, I'm enjoying this. Um... Feel free to uh, follow us on Instagram. I don't, uh, I mean, I do manage the account with uh, the help of contributors and collaborators and uh, other associates. If you're interested, give us a follow, give us a like, share the content, bring others in. Again, for you parents, for you students, it's about time. I mean, fucking pull, pull the wool off of your kids' eyes, man. And, and students <clears throat> at any age, don't be afraid to tell your parents that you want to be a corporate cowboy. Explain, explain to them what the fuck a corporate cowboy is. Or parents, if you want your kids to understand the life that they've been born into, literally, the life that you born them had, have brought them into, it's corporate, baby. Corporate is the future. Let them know that. Even when they're in school... Even when they're in your household, it's corporate. Corporate runs that shit. I don't care if you're on the grid or off the grid. Corporate. And it's not it's not just being incorporated. It's not just being INC. It's not being publicly traded. Nah, that's the wrong connotation. That's the wrong. That's the wrong perception. Corporate is, is just corporate is is the corporate body. The corporate body that is the United States. It's the citizenry. It's all the constituents working together to make the United States what it is. Whether or not you know you're working together. And from there, you can move globally. But again, you need the right skeleton keys for that. You need the right pass. We need the hustle. We need the logic and the tact. To me, having having a brain is like having a hall pass to the world if you know how to use it. <clears throat> if you know what you're looking for. If you know what you want and you know how to get it. Obviously, you want to do it in a righteous manner because, I mean, plenty of motherfuckers start evil and then end up dead. <laughs> But we all end up dead, and let's be real. <clears throat> I would just much rather live a righteous life than 
be living like a paranoid fuck. A little paranoid evil fuck. Can't even trust their own associates. Mm. Hell no, I'm good. I've been in those circles and I'm... <laughs> that shit is not savory. Mm -mm. Follow us on Instagram. Incorporating.associates underscore IA. Again, that's incorporating.associates underscore IA. On Patreon... Uh, subscribe. Go ahead. I, I know I said I was going to do only one, a max of two podcasts a week. And right now I think I've been hitting like one or two a week. Uh, there are tiers on the Patreon site. That's Corporate Cowboys Podcast on Patreon. Uh, subscribe. Um, yeah, just, just hit the highest level, man. Hit the highest level and leave us a message. Leave us a request. There's nothing really uploaded there. <clears throat> it hasn't been made active. I mean, it's, it's active, but it, I haven't been active on it. So, uh, the, the podcast hasn't been uploaded there yet. It might with re any requests that come, any special requests and, um, uh, enough subscriptions. I mean, if, if we hear some some noise in the form of messages, emails, notifications, then there will be an additional material, bonus content or whatnot on specific topics. If you want to just straight up bet your money, bet your life in the form of money. <laughs> if you want to, because, uh, I'd, I mean, I'll be straight up. Uh, criminal minds, stand-up guys with criminal minds, that pretty much implies danger. And it's a bet. It's a it's a bet that the shit's going to get violent in the future. The question is how violent? Will it be postmodern violent, like a microaggression? Or will it be just, you know, traditional violence, macro style? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? I mean, I'm a sociology major and none of that shit was violent. Before school, plenty of violence. But um, I don't know, like postmodern academia loves to loves to harp on what's violent and what isn't and what's wrong and what's racist and what isn't. And honestly, it's uh, in corporate, that doesn't matter. In corporate, it's just a mutual respect. It's a mutual respect of business. If you are productive, then you are good. And if you are unproductive, then you're not good. You're not producing and it doesn't it doesn't mean exertion of labor it just means productivity are you are you part of the organization or not are you are you with it or, or not so if you want to uh i mean yeah we'll call them donations but if you want to bet your money you won't get a return the house never pays but the house does invest. The house does invest. So this casino you'll be betting your money on goes by the name of Alex. And uh, personally, Alex will be using the funds to pay for legal fees, to pay for incorporation fees, to help get AIA um, legally set. Pay any additional associates their dues for their help. Um, and obviously just day-to-day -day expenses. PayPal me through um, using paypal.me slash corporate cowboys. Again, that's paypal.me slash corporate cowboys. Cash app at dollar sign uh, corporate cowboys. If you have Venmo, shoot me a Venmo. That's at Alex underscore Coco. Uh, we're thinking about setting up a Telegram, but likely not. I'm busy as fuck as it is. And additional work I do not need.
My bad. I had a phone call. I had to take real quick. Back to niche studying, though. In high school, what I would have liked is the counselor to direct me, is to guide, to guide me essentially, to counsel me on what steps to take in order to improve, improve my self education outside of school. You know, because. Don't say you know. Just fucking explain it. Because those interests carry on outside of the classroom. If I go home and I... Again, just working off of the artist. If I go home and draw, it's because I have, I have an interest. I have a deep interest in creating art. Whether it's drawing, painting, watercolor, sculpture. Composition of some kind. I have that interest. And so the counselor could put me in touch with some, some upper level professionals. And again, that requires additional legwork on the counselors, if not more counselors, it requires more counselors. So, I mean, few might be up for the work, but again, them being counselors, there are also certification process for counselors. I don't know if it's like counselor science or whatever. But they should be. Why? Because at the end of the day, they're in the service of students. They are for the service of students. They're for the service of education. At the end of the day, servicing, serving the students on their educational journey. Man, I would have loved that. Why? Because... At that point, I could be a fucking I could be a fucking freshman. It could start earlier in middle school at in eighth grade, but I could be a freshman, a ninth grader, a sophomore, a tenth grader, a junior or a senior, eleventh or twelfth grade, right? It could start whenever. Already doing college level work, higher education level work, gaining those credits. If not the credits, gaining the experience. I mean, if if you if you already have if you already have the connect, if you have the connect for the steps to take next while you're in high school, you, you, you want to go to fucking college next and do two years of bullshit general education when what you want to do is just draw or just cure cancer or just, just, I don't know, just breed plants. What you want to become is a self-taught botanist. You you want to go to fucking college and 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 take on additional art an art history class when you won't need it as a botanist? Come on, fucking come on. But again, I've been down that path. I saw it. I dipped out. I took some time away from community college. I I did like a semester or two right out of high school, but I left. I left for work. I was like, you know what? I'm not making any money in school. I wasn't I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't given those opportunities. I mean, I, I wasn't I wasn't aware of those opportunities. The opportunities are there. They are always there. That's why I'm saying it now. I'm not now that I'm older, I ain't giving I'm not giving no fucking passes. I'm giving no fucking passes to people who don't take advantage of the opportunities. I get if you can't ask for the opportunities, you can't ask for what you don't know exists. I get that. I understand it. If the opportunity doesn't if the opportunity wasn't offered to you and you don't know it exists, you're technically not at fault. But if the opportunity is there, <clears throat> I and I'm not going to fault I'm not going to fault anybody who's not creative either. So if the opportunity was there and you just don't know how to maximize it, I mean you've taken the opportunity but you don't know how to maximize it, hey, you're doing something. But if you've taken the opportunity and are squandering it, sorry fam, you get no love from me. Have us cross paths one day and you will get no love from me. <laughs> and that goes that goes not just for students, it goes for teachers, not just for students, it goes for their parents as well. It goes for teachers, it goes for administrators. It goes for institutional officials, public officials.
because folks like being politically active until it's time to get physically active. But you only get as active as you can be. You only get as active as you can perceive active to be. Niche studying. By the time you enter, <clears throat> by the time you graduate high school, you could probably already be be creating scholarly articles at the level of like, at the, at the level of like a third year university student. Not creating the scholarly articles, but conducting the type of research and the analysis and the interpretation that a third year is barely learning and being taught to do. By the time you're in high school, by the time you graduate high school, you could, you could already be on that level. I could have already been on that level. I don't know if I'm talking to you or if I'm talking to myself. Yeah, I might as well talk to myself. But I'm talking to myself in the third person. You could have already been at that level in high school if you had taken the opportunity and maximized it, right? But your poor mind, your poor mind couldn't conceive of it. You had other creativity issues. I don't know what, what you were trying to escape. Drugs, alcohol, guns, knives, and the like. I don't know. Fucking maybe just boredom. Maybe just trying to escape boredom. And school just wasn't enough. You needed additional rush, additional stimulation. And you could have had it through niche studying, but you were born into the system. You didn't choose the system. You were born into it. You were born into public education and public education made you a killer. <laughs> Look at you now, bro. Niche studying was a product of public education and it came through Alex. Again, it's not new. Fucking Stanford had a study out for like design thinking, but even design thinking is just a, a circular masturbatory a fucking circle jerk between two professors, two or three professors on a stage while a class watches. Fuck that noise. You think I want to take you think I want to take notes on professors who just like hearing themselves talk? I don't even like hearing myself talk. I don't know if I've told you I haven't listened to a single episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. I know the way I speak, the way I think, how I solve problems is improving through the Corporate Cowboys podcast. I can, I can benchmark the progress. I've got the benchmark for progress. I know I'm improving the way I speak, the way I intone, pronounce, the way I, my cadence, the rhythm, it's all improved markedly. But I'm not going back to listen to the first fucking episode. I know there's some gems in there, but the kid was stuttering. The kid was nervous. He doesn't have any public speaking issues. He's not afraid to speak publicly. I'll speak to private individuals. I'll speak to groups. I'll take on a stadium if I have to. Granted, given that I don't have to um, talk over anybody, I mean, obviously, I, I would want the microphone and all that shit. Otherwise, I'm just drowned out with noise, right? But I can speak. I can lead. I've worked in teams. <laughs> And at the end of the day, what I wanted to do was, was improve, was innovate, was draw, create art, cure cancer. I wanted to uh, niche study acoustics, harmonics, how it could be used for medicine. I heard of light therapy. Yeah, different wavelengths of light and how it could go through the body, or how it could be used in the body in conjunction with acoustics, harmonics, like actual sound waves, how different frequencies affect cells in the body. Huh. 
And now, I mean, I've, again, like I've, I've niche studied some of it only because I'm a busy guy. I don't have, I don't have the time now to fucking cure cancer. If I was in high school, I could have fucking, I could have cured it already. Even if it was patented and I couldn't use the same patent, I could have found a way around the patent to do it better, to do it cheaper, more efficiently. Why isn't it being used now? The excuse is it's too expensive or it's, it's fucking counterproductive or something. Well, there's infinitely more profit in curing cancer than just treating it. Contrary to popular belief. Infinitely more profit curing cancer than simply treating it. Fuck. I gotta take a call. Hold on. Alright, a quick cut and I'm back. Niche studying. So, if a student in high school gets started early with the help of, say, a counselor, gets the connection, say, say they do want to go into something like uh, chemistry or biology, and then the high school counselor points them to some resources, maybe there's a local lab uh, that they can visit, and there are local labs, there are private laboratories that are registered and that could potentially take visitors uh, so long as you reach out and are interested in what they're studying. I mean, these researchers pursued their own uh, niche, their own path, and were able to, uh, these scientists were able to acquire their own certified lab and licensed to use chemicals, to use processes and, 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 and machinery for the uh, advancement of science. It's up to you to reach out to them. If the high schools, if the high schools can't fucking, if the high school can't commit to the outreach and reach out to these local labs and, you know, schedule a field trip for the handful of students that want to visit, it's up to the students to take it upon themselves take the initiative, reach out to the scientists and get in touch with them. Find out what they're working on. Find out how your interests could be influenced by what they are working on. So you go and learn something about what they're doing and then you ask them your question, your particular interest. Does, uh, do, do plants, do plants, um, uh, do plants grow better? in direct sunlight compared to shade. I don't know, maybe you wanna ask them that. Do plants grow in direct sunlight compared to ambient light? You know, and 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 find out, fucking find out if, if it's possible. You can visit a, a local greenhouse. Maybe they have, you know, some botanists who are, who are up to snuff on, because, I mean, in operating a greenhouse, you've gotta, be aware of what's currently taking place of the technology and a lot of the folks who run successful operations stay on top of current events within their industry and it's up to you to niche study it as a as an investigator as an explorer you take the initiative you take the initiative that's young alex if he was still in high school but no instead he he took the low road and learned the metric system. <laughs> Selling it a piece at a time. <clears throat> but I feel like I came out. I mean, I'm still I'm still winning. I'm still alive. I'm still breathing. I'm not dead. So I have the opportunity. Now that I'm returned to school, I know what I want to be doing, what I want to learn, the niche that I want to be in, and it's this one. It's being a corporate cowboy and cultivating, developing more corporate cowboys like myself, like my associates, incorporating more associates, associates, incorporating associates, and on and on and on. Because it is true, a degree doesn't dictate the level of knowledge that an individual possesses. 
You could have a degree, you could have a PhD and be a fucking idiot. Just learn to memorize and regurgitate. Come the day of the test, of the exam, whatever standardized measure for finding whether or not you've soaked and steeped in enough agenda or propaganda or a select doctrine. You can't bring any outside doctrines in, in today's public institutions, in today's public education. You can't bring in outside ideas. It's sad, but uh, you got to hide those ideas like you would a weapon. Ideas are dangerous. Ideas are dangerous. And I know. I've carried a knife at school. I've carried other things at school. Since I was in fucking third grade. <laughs> I think I said that. Since I was in third grade, I carried a knife. Never pulled it out. Any little ideas that I had, I kept to myself. I was able to graduate unchanged. Unchanged. Still a corporate cowboy. While I might have not known what a corporate cowboy was then, as a high schooler, I definitely know what it is now. And that's what I'm striving to become. <laughs> and it's the same in corporate. It's the same in corporate. You can niche study while you're in corporate. You're just learning the system. You're just getting the experience, getting the exposure to, to what the infrastructure and what the technical rules are. You got to learn the rules to learn how to, to know how to, work within them or outside of them. And a lot of organizations used to uh, capitalize primarily on innovation, like 3M and Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble. You could go to work with a good idea and get paid out for it, so long as you could develop it. Now, Folks have to employ fucking skunk works, taking resources from work, working on the projects at home, or working on projects after hours outside of work in order to, to make something of themselves and potentially uh, leave, leave the company, leave the organization. That's the game. That's the field I want to be working in. And plenty of those individuals exist. Young, young people. Young people who aren't given credit because, again, there's that paradigm of being younger and being older where you're immature and inexperienced when you're young. And so your opinion isn't worth as much. But young people have good ideas all the time. It's just that good ideas mean Everyone has to work more. Like niche studying. Can you imagine a ninth grader going into high school as a freshman and insisting, imploring that their guidance counselor point them to the direction, that, that their guidance counselor help them find sources for, for uh, use their fucking credentials to, to, to get them a connect on a local laboratory to take a trip. Yeah, it takes a little bit of work. And the guidance counselor, if, I mean, if they're fucking, if they're about it, if they're a corporate cowboy, then they'll help the young person out, reach out. Hey, I'm calling on behalf of yada yada school district and I have a student who is interested in your work and would like to visit if we can schedule a day to do so. Right? I make it sound easy. I make it sound fun damn near. But it's legwork and high school counselors, I don't fucking know what they do all day. You think they're counseling all day? I will, I guess, in, in fucking postmodern society, all these little boys and girls are fucking depressed and suicidal because they don't have shit going for them other than forced indoctrination. No real interest in school, no opportunity to niche study. So they could turn that shit all around, but no. 
the stat quo is what they know. They don't, they, they don't, they don't want to fucking work. They just want to be comfortable. They don't want something different. Even if it means better. Why? Because different means more work. Just the change to something better means more work. I'd rather, I'd rather work more and have it be better than, than continue working the same. Just be comfortable with the current level of work and have it be poor. Have it be, have it be unfulfilling. So to the young students, don't give up. Don't let up. Continue studying what you want to study. And the same goes for if, if you've already graduated high school, if you've applied to community college, applied to college and university, consider taking some time to yourself and really contemplate the system you are about to enroll yourself into, the institution into which you are about to matriculate into. You will become institutionalized if you haven't been already. You could niche study what you want to. I'm telling you so. I'm telling you so now. You're out of high school already. You could hit up the local lab. You could hit up a local art class. Not have to enroll into it. Who are you going to talk to? The professor? Ah, I guess. If you get them after hours. I wouldn't. I mean, there are some schools that will allow you to sit in their classes and not pay for them. Some of the public... Schools will allow you to sit in if the professors are okay. If not, just pull aside a student one day. Pull aside the teacher on their, on their way to their office. Ask them some questions. It's not difficult. I mean, it takes a little bit of confidence to step out of your comfort zone and tap somebody on the shoulder. A little shoulder tap. Ask them a question. A little bit of convo. Skeleton keys. In and out. In and out. Get what you need and bounce. <laughs> That's some corporate cowboy shit. And that's how I move. That's how I that's how I used to move when I was younger. I was done with my work. I'd jump up out of my desk and I'd go talk to my other classmates. I forget now what we talked about, but I'm sure I would show up at their desk. Chop it up a little bit, ask him something, go on to the next person, converse a little bit, ask something. I'm just collecting information. I might just, I'm just information collecting, keeping it moving in and out. And yeah, looking back, I don't know if I ever had a, a best friend, a real best friend. I mean, I came up, I, 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 I came into I came into myself around others, and you know there were always others around me as we were as we came up in our formative years, but I had other formative years outside of school, nobody around. So if I ever see them again, I mean, they're old classmates, they're old coworkers, they're old acquaintances, they're previous associates but as far as best friend goes well I don't know if we ever have them oh that that reminds me I got a another episode on deck just um uh, just keeping in mind episode titles I don't know what I'll name this one It'll probably be a continuation of something. Um, dream, a dream to learn or a fucking, I don't know, education. Something educational related. Just so uh, parents could direct their students and students can direct their classmates in order to get them on the same boat. Oh, I got another podcast idea. I got another episode idea. <laughs> On um, on forming an organization, on forming a gang, and yeah, it is gonna require a face similar to the operation I got going right now. 
uh, and I'll be sure to break that down in detail because it's it's a lot of uh, there's betting going on, there's investment going on, some risk appreciation happening, and uh, in order to be successful, you need folks who are ready and willing, not just preppers. You need preppers who are willing to bust into their stash every now and then. Willing to break out of their bag every now and then. What good is having 200,000 rounds of ammo if I can't use 200? What, you're going to need 200 (laughs) the day you need to break out 200,000? Yeah, something like that. You want to send me a letter? You want to send me something of, I don't know, anything I just mentioned uh, previously? By all means, snail mail. Snail mail me that shit. Products. uh, Items to everyday carry. I don't know, good ideas. Anything that I get of duplicates or if I really find I don't have a utility for, I could always give away to other followers. I could create uh, little giveaways on the podcast or the Instagram page or other social media. Send it. Address it to Alex at Incorporating Associates. That's P.O. Box. 3372 Rancho Cordova, California 95742 Again, that's P.O. Box 3372 Rancho Cordova, California 95742 Thank you for hanging out one more time. Have a nice week.